today's apologists claim, half-evolved features are useless and couldn't evolve. As a general rule, creationists get their information exclusively from creationist websites instead of from scientific sources. As a consequence, they have some deeply mistaken notions about how evolution actually works. For instance, they often have the idea that for a species to evolve a new feature, it must go through a period where that feature is only partially formed and thus useless for its eventual purpose, like half an eye or half a wing. The incomplete, growing feature would only get in the species' way and consume bodily resources with no benefit, so natural selection could never select for that feature and thus it couldn't evolve. So that's why we don't see useless, half-formed features in the fossil record. But there are two main problems with this notion. First, in many cases, incremental change can indeed be quite useful at every single step in the evolutionary process, and thus be subject to selective forces. For example, in the case of eye evolution, mutations that simply caused pigment in some skin cells to become light-sensitive, as seen in flatworms, would allow individuals to detect shadows moving over them, alerting them to approaching predators. Mutations that then caused a cup-like indentation in the skin containing those light-sensitive cells, as seen in limpets, would allow individuals to determine the direction of light, and thus the direction of a potential predator. Subsequent mutations that deepened the cup until it was almost closed over, as seen in nautiluses, would provide a small hole that would provide a sharper image. Mutations that caused transparent tissue to cover the hole, as seen in ragworms, would protect the primitive eye's interior cells. Additional mutations causing the cup to fill with coagulated fluid, as seen in abalones, would form a lens that focuses light. Finally, mutations that co-opted muscles around the eyes, as seen in mammals, would allow the focus to be variable. Each of these steps in the evolution of the eye could have taken only one or a few mutations, yet would have served as an improvement for the individual, thus making it something that could be selected for and evolve. That's exactly why we don't see useless, half-formed features in the fossil record. Except, of course, when a species no longer has a need for a feature and it becomes completely vestigial. The second big problem with the creationist claim of useless half-features is that they ignore pre-adaptation. That's where a feature that is used for one purpose, coincidentally, turns out to be a good basis for evolving into something else that's even more useful. The evolution of bird wings is a good example. We know from fossil impressions that theropod dinosaurs had feathers long before they could fly. Feathers are useful for insulation and mating displays, and thus likely evolved for those purposes first. Stiff feathers that evolved along the arms of a dinosaur for elaborate mating displays could have been easily pre-adapted for brief gliding through the air while escaping predators or pursuing prey, or for slowing falls from otherwise dangerous heights. That likely would have been advantageous enough to create selective pressure for longer and more aerodynamic feathers, as well as stronger breast muscles to assist in gliding for longer distances. And once you have all those elements in place, you have a species that is pre-adapted to go from gliding to true flight in one evolutionary step. Notice that at no stage was there ever a useless half-wing, but instead a useful feature that turned out to be a good launching point for evolving something even more useful. So the problem isn't that half-features are useless and couldn't evolve, but that creationists just don't learn how evolution works because they have a vested interest in protecting their religious belief. And for this reason they constantly make false claims about evolution based on fundamentally faulty misperceptions. <laughs>